Good morning. I had an early meeting at the office. Didn't want to wake you. See you later at work. Brooke. time is it? It's early. Why don't you go back to bed? Where are you going? I have a meeting this morning. A meeting? Actually, it's a, it's a conference call from Europe. I'm still trying to find that polymer enzyme. What happened last night? You were wiped out. I fell asleep on you, didn't I? Eric, you had just gotten out of the hospital. In fact, I really think you should stay home today. Oh, an excellent idea. Why don't we both stay home? I have got a zillion commitments. And I have a really strong need to show you how much I love you. You've already shown me that very clearly. And by falling asleep on you when you went into the bathroom, just slip into something more comfortable? I think our European friends wouldn't mind very much if you missed that call. Sweetheart. Um, I'd really... I've got to go. This call is very important. It involves a lot of people. It's a five-party conference call. I need that polymer. I've created a monster. <laughs> all right. We'll put all this off until tonight, but I don't want you in that lab any later than 5 o'clock. You understand? So you and I will have a, a very romantic, intimate evening alone. All right? Okay. Miss Ridge, uh, you going to be in on this conference call? Why? Well, uh, he should be, or one of us should be. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to him about it. All right, good. Now, Eric, I really want you to get some rest. So go to sleep, OK? Until tonight, then. Right and early. Well, I wanted to be the first to wish you a happy birthday. Oh, thank you. You remembered. Name a year I didn't remember. So, how old are we now? That's something I would rather not remember. Well, here. Oh, Blake. Oh, it's just, just a little token. Of what? Whatever. Have you received any other little tokens today? Nope. Ah, well, the day is young. Well, I don't exactly publicize my birthday. These just arrived for you, doctor. In other words, it stinks. You can say it.
the bold and the beautiful. This portion sponsored by Thai. If it's got to be clean, it's got to be Thai. Aren't these beautiful, hmm? Does this mean that these are from you? No, no, they're not from me. Here's the card. From Ridge Forrester, I presume. Thank you for helping me through some difficult moments. And, oh yes, happy birthday. Ridge. Not even love, Ridge? No, just Ridge. I told you yesterday his love is with Brooke, not with Taylor. I'm sorry, Taylor. Really, I know how disappointed you are. Thanks. Well, I've got a lot of work to do. Thanks for stopping by. Hey. Have a good birthday. I'm just going through something, okay? That's all. Of course you are. Yeah, I'll work it out. I've got all winter next spring. And when summer rolls around and half a specter is mine, I'll be sharp as glass. Clark. Don't start with me. Clark, do you really intend on staying unemployed until next summer? Why not? It's kind of like the lottery. Except in my case, I know exactly what's going to happen. You see, in the summer, Sally and I will be married for two years, and half the spectra will be automatically mine. And then I can start living again. Just like that? Well, we'll do a little living beforehand. Kind of like an eight-month-long vacation. Clark, we've got no money. You're working. It's not enough, Clark. Look, honey, I hate to rain on your little parade here, but you're going to have to get some kind of a job. Now, look, it doesn't have to be the best job you've ever had, but just anything to bring in a paycheck. Honey, we can't make it without you working. Can't go back to work right now, Julie. Why not? Look at this stuff. I can't show this to anyone. Honey, you're just worried. I'm not worried. My work will come. It always does. Having a job might help. Will you stop with that? I am not going to go get some work. All right? You hear what I'm saying? I don't need that sort of rejection. I'm getting out of here. Yeah, come on in. Logan, what's happening? What's going on? Where's Dad? He's at home. He's probably asleep by now. But you talk to him. 
Not much this morning. You talked to him last night. Logan, what did he have to say about all this? Doctor, there's a patient to see you. I thought I didn't have any appointments until 10. He doesn't have an appointment. Well, tell him I'm busy. No, wait, Colleen. Who is it? Mr. Garrison. Send him in. Ridge, Eric and I didn't talk that much last night. You didn't? No, he was exhausted. Well, yeah, I guess he would be. What did he do, just fall asleep? No, not exactly. Logan, what happened? He had one thing and one thing only on his mind. Look, I really don't have any right to ask what went on between you. Yes, you do. Ridge, nothing happened. <sighs> Eric had some cognac, and he fell asleep while I was taking a very long shower. But the fact that he expected to make love to you. Oh, Ridge. My biggest fear in life is that we might have been wrong about Eric. Logan, is it possible he's having second thoughts? He's feeling guilty about leaving you, especially with the baby? I don't think so. But is it possible, though? Well, anything's possible, but Ridge, the man who, who brought me home last night, wasn't feeling guilt. He was feeling very romantic. Well, maybe too romantic, like he's overcompensating here? Logan, is it possible he's just reacting to that letter he wrote to Mother, his renewed feelings for her? I wish I felt that way. I truly do, but I'd be lying if I said I did. Everything that Eric did and everything he said pointed at one thing, and one thing only. That we were wrong. We were so wrong. He's as much in love with me now as he ever was. Mr. Garrison? Dr. Hayes? What can I do for you? Actually, I was just in the neighborhood. Your receptionist said that you don't have an appointment for an hour or so. Have you eaten yet? Oh, I don't eat breakfast. Oh, that's the most important meal of the day. And I know a place that has the best omelet this side of Wilshire. You're asking me out for breakfast. You gotta eat, right? Besides, maybe you can tell me your problems. What do you say? I say that you're here for another reason. And I don't think we should discuss it over omelets, Mr. Garrison. Do me a favor. Call me Clark, will you please? All right, Clark. Yes, you are correct. I do have an hour. Would you like it to be for you? Do you have to slice your day into hours? Like it was a pizza or something? This is my work. It's how I make a living. And hopefully some people benefit from it. Yeah. I used to say that about my work, too. You're still unemployed? Only because I'm not looking for work. Yeah, all right. Something is concerning me. My sketches haven't been up to par. Your sketches? Yeah, I designed for a living, remember? Yes, but you said you weren't working, nor were you looking for a job. So what? So who are these sketches for? For me. I'm an artist. I've been doing this since I was a kid. But now, suddenly, nothing seems to be coming. I sit down to sketch. I can't focus. I can't concentrate. And when I do manage to squeeze something out, it's horrible. I'm embarrassed to show it to anyone. Doctor, I want to tell you something. I haven't admitted to anyone. I'm frightened. If I lose it, I think I am. I don't know if I can go on. Let me ask you something. When were you happiest with your work? When was I happy with it? Yes. When do you feel that you were doing your best job? What were the circumstances around that point? When I was at Spectra. Mm. 
And what were the circumstances there? I was married to Sally. We were running the company together. Was the marriage good? Are you kidding? It was a means to an end. So in other words, you were using her? Only as much as she was using me. I was her plaything, her bedroom toy. But the feelings weren't mutual. I shivered inside every time she touched me. Yet, you've been telling me that your career was at its pinnacle then. Yeah. At the time, I was the best. The best in the world. Then you're selling this relationship short. What? I think this woman meant more to you than you're letting on. <laughs> Come on, doctor. You're trying to tell me that I really had the hots for Sally? I'm you... not trying to tell you anything. Generally speaking, people in relationships are more productive when that relationship is going well. You just told me that you were doing your best work during this time. So I can only conclude that you were less miserable with this woman than you feel that you were. Yeah, well, all right. Maybe we got along OK. But that doesn't mean I was in love with her. You don't have to be defensive. I don't care if you were in love with her or not. But you were happy with her. I'd say we were comfortable and leave it at that. Yes, but comfortable is where it's at, Clark. That's where home is. And you're anything but comfortable right now. What are you telling me to do? It's just an observation. Your work is what seems to be the most important thing to you. Yes, it is. And your work was fulfilling when you were living with your wife? Now you're no longer living with your wife, and your work is no longer fulfilling. So you can draw your own conclusions from there. I take it the two of you are divorced? No. Well, that is interesting. Um, this is a woman who you're telling me you can't stand, and you haven't divorced her? She hasn't divorced me. Why do you suppose the two of you are still legally married? I don't know. This woman was more of a catalyst to your work than you're willing to admit. And there is a way to get back to her, Clark. There is a way to heal the wounds from the relationship between the two of you. And only you know what that is, and only you know how to do it. Thank you, Doctor. You've given me something to think about. Send me a bill. How could this be? I don't know. He didn't say anything about the letter? Nothing? No, he didn't even mention Stephanie's name. How could we be so wrong about this? How? I mean, that letter, is there another interpretation happening? No, Ridge. He wrote it to Stephanie, and it was very clear and unequivocal. He wanted her. He felt his marriage to me was a mistake. What does that mean? Is he changing his mind, then? Well, it's too damn late for him to change his mind now. Logan, I can't give you up now. Not after last week. Dad can't expect that of me. I'll talk to him tonight. Tonight? I don't even want you to be with him tonight. I want you with me. Besides, what would you talk about? That letter that he wrote to Stephanie. No. No, before you talk to Dad, let me talk to Mother. Why? Because something weird is going on here, Logan, and I'm damn well going to get to the bottom of it. Logan, in the meantime, why don't you go to work? What about you? Just let me work with it. What about tonight? Tonight? This all has to be cleared up before then. Because I'm not spending one more night without you. <laughs> 